theoretically we're live. Let me check this. Waiting for Twitch to tell me that we're live. It says we're live. I'm getting a quick audio check. Okay. I got the email. What we should do is we should start at the one minute mark. As soon as you say live, we should start at the one minute mark so people know to always skip if they're watching YouTube to one minute. Oh. <laughs> So they don't hear this 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 banter between us. Anyway, I'm ready. All right, uh, I am good. Uh, okay, three six. Okay, <clears throat> let me put this here. Okay, three two one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here on the In Thirty Network. My name is Hiam, and Tom is there. Hi. He's always there. You know how I know he's always there because I call him and I say, "Are we ready to record?" And he's always there. I'm always anyway, right here. I, so, so it's, I know it's been a week. It's been a while. I mean, the quick recap is there's still a, is it a conflict? There's, there's still a conflict in Ukraine. There's still, the world is still ending. There's still cybersecurity scams going on. I think uh, Bitcoin scams are still a thing. Nothing has really changed since the last time we talked to you. So, unfortunately, we don't have any real, like, huge security news. Like, there's no, like, Spectre meltdown coming, which I guess is a good thing. I, I always say that's a good thing. There was, there was a Java vulnerability. Um, it's getting fixed. It's not nearly as big as Log4J. Um, wasn't great, but not as big as Log4J. There was a Chrome Zero Day. Um, update Chrome when it asks you to. Not, not... Not to forget, not last time's Chrome Zero Day, which was also like two weeks ago. It's another Chrome Zero Day, so just keep updated. And again, there's Spring for J. There's these things that, again, we can't really help you solve. It's one of those things, if you just keep updated, like life will pass you by. Our goal is to bring ideas to the masses. So we left you last time uh, with uh, legal misunderstandings, and we gave you the final four. So I'm going to ask Tom, because I have the answers. He doesn't know that I'm asking him this. Between the First Amendment and RICO, which one was more misunderstood? Mm, I'm going to say RICO. I'm going out on a limb here. I'm hoping it's RICO. It's First Amendment. Ah, I knew it. Okay. Uh -huh. That makes Your sense. Practice is already busted. Free speech and Section 230, which is more misunderstood? Free speech. Section 230. <laughs> if anything, okay, right. you can count on me to be consistently wrong. Okay. First Amendment or Section 230 for the win? First Amendment. First Amendment. Okay. First Amendment is, right. okay. I got one. So the most misunderstood legal topic based on last week's episode is the First Amendment. Which, I mean, we, we had a whole show on this. You can go back and listen. It's literally the last one. Um, and misunderstood, yeah, most people don't understand any of this. Like literally any of this. All of this is not not even complicated. It's just we don't understand it. Anyway, so again, so if there's no real news, what are we going to talk about? And I think the answer is setting, again, we're going back to that career advice channel if you want to break in. And we're talking about web, we're talking about how to showcase your talents. I guess that's the right way to put it. Um, and so, so um, I guess I'm going to let Tom start, but. I have first, Tom wrote really nice show notes for us today. What do you want to communicate and why? I'll just read right off of it. So, Yeah, so in building any tech portfolio, the first thing you have to figure out is what are you trying to do? What, like, what do you want to communicate? Why do you want to communicate that? Um, for a tech portfolio, it, it can be a personal website. You can go crazy. You can set up CDNs. You can have it be like a, a three layer cloud app. You can run everything through Lambda. Um, like you could go pretty crazy with all of this stuff, but you don't have to. 
Um, your tech portfolio could be a LinkedIn page that that you maintain and and curate and and manicure into this beautiful art form. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You, you can have a GitHub profile that that you're particularly proud of, and you have a lot of stars on or accepted pull requests into big projects. You know, it could be a combination of all of these things. Just know that. There's not any one right or wrong way to go about this. Honestly, what it's going to come down to is the content that you put into it. Uh, so just know that if you are building on top of somebody else's platform, if, you, you, if your profile or your portfolio is on GitHub or LinkedIn um, or a, a site builder, um, then yeah, it's going to be stuck in somebody else's playground. And you know, you may or may not like what they do in the future. I don't think GitHub is going to do anything horrifyingly evil in the future, but you don't know. LinkedIn is already kind of an evil place, but it's there. Um, so just just understand that if you are building something on top of somebody else's platform, the ground can shift underneath you. So for me, so you're I saying do... no. I was going to say no to Spotify podcasts. <laughs> Spotify exclusive podcast as your resume. Not good. Uh, yeah, I'm saying uh, that's that's one thing I will absolutely take a non wishwashy stance on is I do not like Spotify podcasts. I don't like Spotify getting involved in podcasts at all. They're throwing around a lot of money and they're locking things behind a paywall and it's it's disgusting. Uh, I I always thought podcasts were kind of above that, but of course they're not. Um, so anyway. I wouldn't use Spotify podcasts for your personal portfolio, but uh, if you want to, yeah, you do you. Um, you know, so are you trying to get a job? Are you trying to build like a repository of knowledge? Are you just playing around with stuff and seeing what you can do? That's totally valid. You don't have to, you know, put your best foot forward all the time. You can just play around with this stuff and see what works. Um, are you making an archive? Like for me, it was... Kind of all of those things is why I have a personal website and a GitLab page and projects and LinkedIn and learnings and musings and all this stuff uh, on, on my website is because I was trying out everything. Um, it has landed me a few job interviews. It has landed me a job before. Um, so, you know, it wasn't worthless. Um, that said, when I took this, uh, not this most recent job, but the one before that, I basically stopped updating the website because the company had some pretty gnarly policies around social media and blogging and, and stuff like that. Um, so just know that, yes, it has worked uh, and it might work for you. Not a guarantee. I would, you know, stress that you go explore every single avenue if you're trying to start off your career or uh, grow into a bigger and better position. Um, but like, what kind of things are expected in a tech portfolio? Well, hold on. So, so you, I mean, you said you made your website. I, I've always said this. I've wanted to learn web. I don't want to learn web development. I hate making websites. And I think I hate making websites for the sure, like the very simple reason is that I don't know what I want on it. But I think you gave me the recommendation probably when we started the the podcast, go to some VPS and get some space and play around. So I have a website to literally play around with. And I don't update it. I don't do this. I get some itch every year to do something. I ask you for the arson command to, to push the new copyright. I think it still says 2020. But that, I, that's what I'm doing. I, I go, I, I, I learn something very simple. I make it. I hope it never breaks and that's it until the next project. And I think after um, this year, I started a tutoring business and I want to get more clients. So I'm going to now tailor my website for more tutoring businesses. So all of that is going to happen soon. Yeah. And your website doesn't have to be this, the static or archive thing, right? If, if something's not working, if you want to change it, if you want to just blow it up and try something entirely different, go for it. It's your website. It's your space. Do what you want to with it. Um, for a tech portfolio, and I've, I've looked at a lot of tech portfolios, um, you know, having a GitHub or GitLab with projects that you're particularly proud of. Um, if you're still in school, you know, putting your school projects up there, if your school allows it, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Um, and, you know, especially with school projects, um, 
the people who are looking through your GitHub aren't necessarily looking for the most perfect code, right? Uh, e even if you write something really gnarly and nasty, but it works, and you can throw in a comment to that effect, like above your code saying, look, this is the ugliest thing I've ever written in my life. I hate it. But, you know, it worked and I couldn't find an easier way. And here are other things that I've tried. Like, if you are able to communicate that, even if your, your code that you've committed just looks like absolute hot garbage, if you're able to communicate why it looks like hot garbage, what you've tried and what you ended up landing on, that's good enough for me. Honestly, the main thing that I look for um, on a tech portfolio is just what is your ability to communicate? Being an effective communicator is the first and greatest thing uh, you can do to jumpstart your career in any business. Uh, being able to, co to communicate your internal state that's in your head effectively to somebody else through a screen or through written word is huge. Uh, there are entire career paths and, and entire uh, career coaching sessions uh, dedicated to just making people more effective communicators. Um, and the way you practice that is... You practice it. Uh, you communicate, right? Does that take the form of a blog or making funny quips on Twitter or making really effective code with good documents, good comments? Yes, all of the above. Uh, for me, I got my start in just blogging about the stuff I was researching and looking into and absolutely failing and making reviews. And, you know, I, I ran the gamut of everything and it has helped me become a better writer. Uh, which was huge in my career. Uh, just being able to bridge that gap between tech people, like engineering, hardcore focused minds, uh, to just the average person who doesn't really care about anything on the inside. They just want the thing to work. And being able to bridge those two gaps of the people who want the down and dirty details of the technology to the people who just want the thing to work has been incredible for my career. Uh, so try to figure out how that works and how you can bridge those gaps and be a more effective communicator. At every DEF CON and ShmooCon and I'm, um, what was the one in Kentucky that you liked? DerbyCon. At DerbyCon. I mean, literally at all of them, one of their first day panels is how to get land a job in technology, um, how to how to dress appropriately, how to communicate effectively. And they're not saying anything mind boggling. They're basically saying reply to emails in a timely fashion. Um, if you, don't say um a lot uh, or uh. <laughs> Try to stop all these pauses in your in your speech. Try r respond to people when someone sends you an email. Reply back. The one thing that drives me crazy now is everyone saying, "I hope you and your family and everyone you love is well." Uh, it's been a hard time, and I know. No, 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 drop that. Tell me what you need. Like short and sweet and to the point is good, but say that for a little more formally. L learn, learn. We have to go back to teaching proper email etiquette. We have to go back to to or I, I do like the formality at some level. And and if you can do that, if you can wake up on time and and be places on time, all these little things that you say everyone can do that, the answer is no. No a lot of people can't do that. And if we're in this work from home environment, they need to know that you're working, that you're starting at nine o'clock, you're ending at five o'clock, you're going to be there. And you're going to check Slack or Discord. I don't know. Businesses don't use Discord, but Slack and and your email or whatever system you're using. And you're going to be a, a member there. They, they need that. They need to know that you're doing that. So all these soft skills that we're discussing, while they're not programming, they're still really important. Um, I know I, I know for your job interview, did you put on a suit? You didn't put on a suit. You, did you put on a polo shirt? I uh, I believe I was actually yeah I I wore this EFF hoodie. Uh, are you wearing <laughs> pants? Um, doesn't matter. The camera stops here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna remind you to put pants on. If you're if you're I, having an interview, please put pants on. I've heard I've heard stories say, where people I have did not. wear pants. Okay. Wear pants. Um, no, and being funny, it's it's. I, I teach it to my students. You can be a really great programmer, but if you cannot communicate what you're doing, 
nobody is going to hire you because you're going to leave in six months, seven months, 18 months. And now someone's going to have to figure out what you did. And while you complain about what the person before you did, you're doing the same thing. And, and so commenting that code, writing that documentation, doing writing things down is probably more important than the actual code. And yeah, I, I think we, we fail to see that. In, so, in my I mean, job, it's, I'd much rather, much rather read code that's that's lengthy but simple instead of something that's terse and clever. Because the tiny, compact, clever code you write, it's cool for code golf. And like, if, if you're starting a blog, by all means, if you want to make code golf posts and say, look, I did this big, long operation in like seven characters. Cool. You can be proud of that. Absolutely. Don't do that in a business setting. Don't do that in an open source code setting unless it's purely for code golf reasons, right? Trying to get the lowest amount of characters to do the maximum amount of work. That's cool. It's also super, super painful for anybody working on that code after you, or even especially working with the absolute worst programmer you have ever worked with, which is um, the code you wrote yourself six months ago. That's literally the worst programmer I've ever worked with in my life is past me. He's terrible. He's the worst. Uh, so optimize for clarity, optimize for simplicity, write boring code, uh, especially in a portfolio. Uh, you want something to be easily communicated uh, because that's what it's about. Working in a team setting and getting people to you know pick up what you're putting down uh, and being able to hack on the same project with you. You want to write code that's obvious, that's boring, it's straightforward, because it's really easy to work with people who write boring code. It's really hard to work with people who write clever code. I will say, if you join our Signal group, I oftentimes put very clever code in the chats and ask for everyone's opinion. So if you join that signal group starting again, in, I guess in September now, you will see lots of very clever code, which I need lots of opinions on. But I was going to ask, so so we have, I have my website that I play around with. And I think I literally say, this is my website to play around with. I think everything I do is this is just me learning. Right now I'm learning, I guess what we're learning, Jekyll. Uh, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to redo the website in Jekyll. I want to do some more VPN stuff because I think it's fascinating and networking things. So again, find a project, document it. Um, I mean, we spoke about that. I'm going to do, I want to wire my house. I've done that. I want to get everything's on VLANs or how do you study for the sec plus test? I mean, I don't want to say start a blog, but starting a blog may not be the worst idea. It shows your writing. They want a writing sample. It's there. It's it's there. It they'll they'll be able to get all those soft skills and those consistencies out of the way uh, right off the bat. So, I mean, we wrote high quality writing. I I really want to stress that being able to communicate properly. If you are not a native language speaker, this will be harder for you. It's it's you, you can't unfortunately you can't hide behind the I don't speak. I don't speak English well. Well, you got to do something. If you can't write well, you got to speak well. If you can't speak well, you got to write. You got to write well. Your code will take you 80, 80 to ninety percent of the way there, but that extra ten percent is going to be the difference. Yeah, and the the main way I got started um, in in practicing this technical writing, uh, it's quite literally. I would build projects uh, with my my little Linux box at home that I turned into a server. Uh, it was a dual boot gaming PC that half of its life was spent serving really boring websites. Um, but I decided to write tutorials on my blog of how I built this thing and how you could build it too for yourself. And I quite literally put together tutorials online on how you could do these projects that I was doing. Uh, and I actually learned a lot that way. I learned what I did and didn't understand. The only way you're really, really going to learn something is if you try to teach it to other people. Um, so when you put the stuff online, you know, you might not get people interacting with it, but it will force you to try to think ahead 
and think about problems that you yourself ran into and try to preempt those issues that other people could run into as well. Um, by putting these tutorials online, by going through the steps of saying, okay, well, first I did A and then I did B and then I did C. Cool. But how you got there was probably a lot of, well, I tried this thing and this didn't work and I tried that and this thing didn't work. So if you're doing just the raw tutorial of one, two, three, cool. But you should also make, maybe not in the same documentation, maybe in a separate blog post, here's the things that I tried that didn't work and here's how I, I researched and got around this problem and here's the steps I followed. Like walking that line and being able to communicate to people, here's the weird winding path I took to get from problem to solution. It will not only communicate your ability to communicate, uh, but it'll also communicate your ability to problem solve and how you dive into issues, which is hugely valuable. If you're joining an operations team, if you are joining as a Linux sysadmin, you don't even have to be a programmer. Being able to walk through that engineering problem path uh, and being able to communicate that to other people and show that you've documented your steps is absolutely huge. Um, quite literally, in every single job interview I have ever done, those original blog posts of where I was trying to diagnose a problem and I wrote down what I tried and what didn't work and what eventually got me out of that jam, uh, I have literally used that in every single job interview I have had for the past 20 years. It's, it's invaluable. I, it's worth its weight in gold. I've always told my students, um, when you're having a problem with your device, what I really wish is that there was a help desk ticket. Like, you know how you submit help desk tickets? There sh you should be writing help desk tickets to yourself on how you solved it. And then somebody should aggregate them. Like, make your website on the, on the support tickets and how you solved them and how you communicated back with people. And it's because you're going to look and say, crap, I did this five years ago. I don't remember what it is. Maybe let me search my repository of my own help tickets and do that. I and as we're literally talking, have done that. When I encountered and I wish problems, I did that. yeah. When I encountered problems just uh, with personal tech stuff or even even some like non-critical, non-company secret business tech stuff, and I solved the problem, I wrote a blog post and I literally have had issues where years, years after the fact, I ran into that problem again. I'm like, wait, I've seen this before. And I quickly Googled my domain and like a couple keywords. I'm like, ah, yep, there's my blog post. That's exactly how I solved it. And I was able to use the exact same solution over again. Uh, so you might help out future you too. I was going to say, I mean, I, I've had exactly that three years later. I forgot this one thing that I know. I can tell you this, that if you have a Nest thermostat, you ha it, it drops the internet connection if the packets are too small because it sends really small packets and to prevent uh, too much packet radiation or just traffic, Ubiquity will drop the packet. The problem is they change your UI every six months and I'm afraid to touch it because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose that in my thermostat. I know what the problem is. I just don't remember how I solved it. And I know that I searched it and now I have to go back and find it. And then I'm going to get a blog post from 2014 that's stale. And I'm going to see, is this the one? So I should have done that. Even taken the screenshot so I know what to look for and the keywords and everything else. That's what I should have done. I did not do that. I just remembered that I'm going to have this problem again. Writing all that stuff down. And and I think it's, I, I would do it in the, se in the sense that you know what you want to do. If you want to do IT help desk, writing blog posts on how you solved it. Because again, people are going to come to you before you leave, after you leave. If you have this repository of where you can help them, you are literally saving the company money or your time. Like, like you can lie about it. You can sit in your office and say, here, I wrote a tutorial for you. You can do it. And then you don't have to solve it. Or you can give that to the company and say, hey, look at my self-worth because I did all this. Um, if you're programming, we talked about GitHub and GitLab. What do you want on there? I, I, if you are project management, what projects have you done? And the thing that's not on this is think outside of the tech sector. So you've, you've handled a project. What's the project? We, we do a podcast every two, three weeks. That's a project. 
it, it requires me to communicate with Tom on what we need to do. We have to write down show notes. We have to get our recordings together. We have to do all this. It doesn't sound like a lot, but hey, you've done it. Um, if you're doing it with, with somebody else, you have a meeting. I'm not saying go to every lit- nitty gritty, but if you don't have these big projects to show, what have you done? You made an N6. I, I don't know if you would do a Nintendo emulator and use the word Nintendo anymore, but I, I made a media server box. I made a video game box. I made a VPN. People will hire you saying that you've made a VPN. I, I didn't believe that, but that's a thing. Um, writing all that find out what niche niche you want to do and try to tailor all these different things and trying to get that job even Uh, even if it's something as simple as hey i saw this thing called the retro pie and i can play video games with my raspberry pi and i tried to install it and i ran into this issue and it was this thing and it was stupid and i made a dumb mistake but then i did this thing and i fixed it and now it's it's like this and it's cool like it doesn't sound impressive. It sounds like you're kind of waffling on it. It was a stupid typo that you had somewhere. Look, it doesn't have to be crazy. You don't have to be doing PhD levels of research. If it was as simple as, hey, I got stuck on this thing because of this stupid problem and I solved it like this, that's good enough. It, it's plenty good enough. Half of the blog posts on my website are, I ran into stupid problem and I did this stupid thing to solve it after Googling it for an hour. Um, like that's, that's huge. Not only does that show you have the ability to solve problems that you run into, it also shows by the virtue of it being on your website that you have the ability to write it down, document it and communicate that to other people. And in a tech business, uh, even in just like it positions, cause I, I started out in the, the trenches of the it help desk. That was the differentiator. That's what got me hired. It's the fact that I was able to write stuff down. When you copy Java code and you paste it into your IDE, if it has quotation marks and you copy it from non-Unicode, it copies as the wrong quotation mark and Java can't parse it correctly. And you're going to be like, how do you know that? Because I do that a lot. That happens a lot. And when I'm doing dealing with other things and I say, and somebody says it's not working. I said, check your quotes. They look at me funny and it magically works. How come that worked? You don't need to know why it worked or did it work. I'm telling you it's because of the Unicode of the, of the quotation. However, I just now saved you hours and hours and hours of time. So to, uh, to add a little bit, cause I, I know we're running out of time to add a little bit about security in particular. Um, there are a bunch of bug bounties out there. There are a bunch of bug bounty platforms. If you want to get started in hacking stuff, breaking stuff, um, the first thing you're going to need to do, and, and honestly, this is the thing that literally every single security professional is going to tell you. Being a security professional involves, number one, writing. You, it's just it's a job where you write reports and then sometimes occasionally you hack into systems but most of the time you're just writing a bunch of reports um and it, it sounds boring and yeah it, it kind of is uh but most of the time you are communicating here's a risk here's what we found here's what we did here's how you should respond to that uh it's a whole ton of report writing like 85 percent report writing 15% breaking into box. Um, and when you join one of these bug bounty platforms, you're going to have to be a good communicator. But a bug bounty platform is a nice place for you to be able to hack on stuff. And hey, maybe if you find a bug, you get a payday out of it. So can't really go wrong there. Um, so yeah, check out bug bounties. Um, if you're looking at the Linux sysadmin or developer track, you know, making a, a blog or a nice GitHub portfolio of stuff you've worked on, stuff you've solved. Um, stuff you've built just around the house. Hey, if you made a, a Raspberry Pi automatically water your plants when they get dry, I mean, that's a huge project. Put it in there. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could be, here's a problem I had. Here's how I solved it with technology. If you can document that, yeah, that's great. Just do I it. Wanna, I want to discuss, you don't need to be a great designer, but you need to have some design. 
I, I I see that a lot. Well, I can do all this. I can write great code, but if your website is black uh, uh, black text on a white background with nothing else, it's not De- going to go over well. Depending, if I'm looking at the website, I'm instantly going to be a fan of that. I just I I go back and I say I I don't need great things. I don't need the scroll hijacking. I don't need pictures. I don't need things scrolling. I need some sort of ability to. F- you, you wrote navigate, navigate there. I, I understand the minimalism. I understand all of that. But one of the things that we've all, I've always told people with security, the reason people don't do it is because it's not pretty. A key pass is excellent. It's just not pretty. Last pass was pretty. Um, it's command line didn't work. GUI works. I'm not saying that GUI is better than command line or whatever it is. It's one of those things, a slight, yeah, you don't have to th- it, you don't have to do design first, but there has to be something there. You can say, you know what, I'm terrible at design. I'm just going to make my personal website on GitHub and like literally your GitHub page and do what is it? What are they called? Gists? Is that the right word? The, what's mean, the text thing called? Yeah, or is it I, gists? There, there there are gists. Um, like if if you wanted to to just look up like you know open source web website themes and pick one that loads relatively quickly and looks kind of nice. That's fine. You don't you don't have to be a front end designer. You don't even have to be a back end designer. Like if you want to throw up like a blogger or a WordPress page, um as long as you are your writing is what is being focused on, the ephemera doesn't matter that much as long as people can navigate it, right? I, like my my website, sure, I I grew a lot of my template myself. You don't have to do that. Just pick something that looks decent and is easy to work with and you're done. Uh, the thing is, don't overthink it, right? The, the writing and the quality of your communication should be the star of the show. And once you overthink it, then you stop doing it. So figuring out a template and being like, oh, I want this, I want that. Yeah, it's going to take some time. But you're, you know what? The process of creating the website is a project of an, in yeah. and of itself. And the timing and a deadline and everything else is going to show all these different things. So again, in 30 minutes, we've said the same thing over and over again. Writing is the most important thing that you can possibly do. Uh, Having projects is there too, but writing is the most important thing in, I think, literally any job. And so don't underestimate writing. Just if, if you're not a good writer, try to find ways to make that better or to hide around it. But don't erase it off. Don't. But you got to practice. And yeah. if you're really good at writing, showcase that. You may not. I don't consider myself a good programmer at all. But I can. I can write documentation. I can do. I can tell you when something's going to fail. I have enough practice on that. That may get me a job just literally because I can explain things. And so, I can do step by step and everything else. Here's a real quick bulleted list of ideas for stuff you can put on your website. Um, if you want a resume, you could do that. Uh, projects you're proud of. Cool, that's easy. How about projects you failed at, but you learned something and you can write about that? That's super valuable too. Um, volunteer work? Yeah, absolutely. Open source contributions. Like even if it's something like documentation, absolutely. Throw that in there. Um, if you're really proud of your Stack Overflow profile and the amount of imaginary internet points you've accumulated, yeah, why not? If you want to review books, movies, video games, TV shows, whatever, and practice your writing and throw that on your blog, yeah, why not? Showcase it. It's your website. Do whatever you want with it. You can also do none of those things or all of them. You can do something fun. I mean, you want to review, I don't know, you have a YouTube page? I don't know. If it's fun, absolutely. Again, showcase yourself because... Corporate culture, they don't, I, I don't think they just want all robots. They want you to be able to talk to people. They want you to engage with you. I still think they're, I, are they doing corporate retreats anymore? Is that not a thing? Not really. I mean, like, yeah, not really. No. Okay. I mean, I was going to say now that we're all work from home, I mean, I don't know. Awards, if you got on Rate My Skype Room it somehow and you can post your your good score there, I don't know. Do something like that. It could be whimsical. That's the right word. 
take whatever whimsy that you can and elaborate on it and go from there. Anyway, we are over time. I will tell you, join our signal group again. Uh, expect another delay for another show because I don't see anything coming. I think there's just too much conflict and we're just too focused about cyber warfare. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. So I I will be very busy coming up very shortly. So we will do this. The best thing you can do is join our signal group. Talk to us. That's when you can get the show all the time because we're constantly talking it. Anyway, with that said, everyone have a good night and we will probably see you in two or three weeks. See Bye, everybody. Awesome. What number?